must have been really pleased with the start of the game, but obviously disappointing for the boys couldn't go on in those last three quarters. Yeah, I mean, our start was, was great. Uh, congratulations to Sydney and, and Chase and their group over there. Uh, they're, just, they're just better than us and um, had no answer for them. And uh, we got to flip the page and move on quickly um, to another game on Sunday. So um, some lessons to be learned. But at the end of the day, uh, with two games left, we just got to refocus uh, quickly and regroup and have a good day tomorrow with some review and then get ready to go Sunday. Feel like the Kings really lifted their intensity in that second quarter. Was this a case of the guys not being able to match it throughout that second quarter? quarter? Well, they scored 37 points on us, so it was a variety of things of you know poor offense and uh, their defense and um, our poor defense also. So it was um, one of those quarters that we continue to talk about with our group um, that we've had all year. Um, the consistency of being inconsistent uh, remains with us, and, and those quarters, um, you know, they're hard to come back from. And obviously, that obviously makes things incredibly tough now in terms of the playoff ambitions. Obviously, two important games on Sunday and then um, against the Warriors later next week. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> it's the end of the year, and uh, we have 14 wins, I believe, and uh, we're right in the thick of things still, and uh, we'll strap it back up on uh, Sunday and go after it again. Um, it is what it is. I've said it all along. We'll, we'll finish where we're supposed to finish, and if we're in, we're in. If we're out, we're out. Chris or anyone else? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, to jump in. Um, Scott, you did such a good job to contain them in the first quarter. You forced them into nine turnovers. Your defense was was on song, and you were able to create offense from that. Um, what did they do that changed after that? Because I mean, they almost did the exact same thing to you then for the rest of the game. Yeah, I mean, they they obviously started making shots, and our defense was breaking down here and there. But then I think really um, we got quite stagnant defensively. I mean, pardon me, offensively. Uh, the ball didn't move uh, as much as it was, and and we got you know stuck on one side of the floor and. And got a little too hungry on that side of the floor and, and probably overhandled the ball a little bit, which obviously led to the thing you don't want to do to them is um, early shots and quick shots, which will feed their transition and, and their one on one players to get in the open floor. They just make you pay, I guess, more than every other team, don't they? I mean, the way they shot the ball, I think they went 14 of 16 in that second quarter. I mean, there's, not, there's just no other team that can quite make you pay like they can. Yeah, I mean they're fantastic. Um, they're fantastic to watch. I enjoy watching them, and they got some, you know, really dynamic players over there uh, at, you know, multiple positional players over there, and and they're a handful. Will, how did you see things out there tonight? Yeah, I think uh, they turned it up a little bit in the second quarter, and we just started um, trying to jam things in there on the first side of offense, and that sort of led to us breaking down a little bit defensively, and. Um, you know, like Scott said, they capitalised very quickly on on your mistakes and led to some runouts. And um, you know, it's it's not really how we wanted to play, but um, we sort of fed into how they wanted us to play, um, which is a bit of a shame. But you know, like Scott said, there's we've got two games left. They're two must wins, and you know, we sort of flush this one and come back on Sunday. Short turnaround. Is it a good thing? I guess both that you don't have long to stew over this game, but also the fact that you don't have to travel, so you can can stay at home and now get ready for Sunday and, and wait for Perth to, to get to town? Yeah, I, I guess so. Um, travel's always a factor, but um, it's never an excuse. Um, you show up for your job and you play your hardest and do what you can, and that's what we're going to do Sunday. But I think more importantly, these round, this round um, for us, uh, being Pride round, um, we also have our Teal game on Sunday, which is massive for us. Um, it's sort of one of those... These rounds is bigger than basketball. There's things going on around the world where people aren't included and you know we want to be a club and a league that supports people like that and um, you know on Sunday we got the Teal game which is you know helping one of our uh, Jack Jumpers family and Joe Harris and the battle that she's had with cancer and um, you know trying to raise as much money as we can and put our best foot forward for her and her family and um, and everyone in Tasmania and I mean also one of my best mates got punched in the head on a night out the other week, or this week, and has been in hospital with brain surgery. And, you know, there's things going on right now. It's bigger than basketball, but um, we just turn up and do what we can on Sunday for make people proud that we can. No, very well said on all, all three fronts. Can I just ask you about, about Harry? Is it, is it, I mean, it, what happened is horrible, but is it at least somewhat comforting that he looks like he's, he's on the mend quite quickly? Yeah, it's, it's obviously awful. You don't want that to happen to anyone, um, let alone a best mate. It's something that uh, it hits you pretty quickly and um, had a few tough conversations and it's, it's been a big week uh, for me personally. But, uh, 
yeah, it's good to see that he's he's getting better. And um, I haven't heard from him yet, haven't get to spoke to him, but uh, been in contact with his missus and uh, he seems to be doing well. Uh, it's a good sign that I, just this afternoon he was able to put out a, out a tweet, so he's, he's feeling up and about enough to do that, which is a, a good sign. Um, can I just ask about, about you, Will? You've been able to string string a pretty good now second half of the season together and you've been able to stay healthy, stay out on the court. How, how are you feeling? Yeah, I feel good. Um, uh, you know, I'm getting through practices and games and recovering well and body's feeling good. So, um, you know, I'm ready to use or play as Scott's, you know, ready to use me. So, uh, you know, like I've always said, we have such a dynamic bigs group that we can play certain options and different things all game. So I'm just ready to go when, when he calls my name. Scott, can I just get your thoughts on a couple of things that, yep. that Will mentioned? Yep. The Teal game and how much that means for the club and the organisation on Sunday and also... Um, your thoughts on Pride Round and the fact that you're, as an organisation, more than happy and willing to, to be part of it? Yeah, I mean, obviously we're an exclusive, in, inclusive. Um, we want to make sure that, you know, obviously all we, every, everyone is involved with this uh, from our club standpoint and from the state standpoint, but more importantly, just how we represent ourselves. So we're quite inclusive with the people that we're uh, representing out there. And I think it's uh, a great um, thing by the, by, the, uh, by the NBL, the initiative by the NBL, and we're happy to be jumping on board with it and supporting uh, that um, our club wants to be known as a, a club that's you know inclusive to everyone, uh, treating everyone equally. Um, the game on Sunday is hugely important uh, for the reasons that Will has stated. Uh, it's personal for me because I've lost two family members to cancer also, so uh, the game is, is, is big in a lot of different ways, and uh, hopefully we'll put on a good performance on Sunday. No, very well said. Just the last one from me. The game on, on Sunday now against the Wildcats, a big game obviously, but we saw last week with the Wildcats coming off a similar travel from Friday night to then having to the travel and come on Sunday. The Phoenix talked about how they, they wanted to take advantage of them, potentially being a little bit tired. Simon Mitchell even talked about you know deliberately not calling timeouts just to take advantage. Is that something you'll look to potentially do on Sunday to try to hopefully drop... Well, I think we just have to be our demeanor and our intent has, has to be better just in general across the board, uh, irregardless if they're coming in from wherever they're coming in from. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, they got the best player in the world, I've said multiple times, it's not in the NBA. And so when they walk on the floor, they have a chance to beat you every single time with him. So uh, there's a lot of things to um, take care of against them and uh, they'll be ready to go. I'm sure they'll be quite fired up to come and play. And um, you know, in this building, I think everyone really enjoys coming in to play in this building. Not only us, but the other teams enjoy coming in here because of the atmosphere, and that's a credit to our fans. But um, they'll come in here all fired up and ready to go, and uh, we'll, we'll take a swing at them. Oh, excellent. Thanks very much, guys. Yep. Any final ones? Ben? Wondering, you guys had a really good start with offensive rebounding, something you've not been particularly great at um, statistics-wise in the past. Is that something you're looking to improve on? And, and how come it wasn't able to, to play out for the whole game? Uh, well, we've, we'll, we'll both uh, take it. We've been a very good offensive rebounding team just in general. Um, we've, we're very good in a lot of areas. Um, in that category, and tonight uh, we were okay again, and we continue to talk about going to the offensive glass. Um, but, you know, uh, it's difficult also when they're making shots and you're just taking it out of the net and the whole grind of the game and the pace of the game. And, um, you know, sometimes you are better in some situations getting offensive rebounds. We've had some really big nights where we've done a really good job on the offensive glass and some nights not so well, but uh, our intent is always to go offensive rebound. You can go ahead, Will. <laughs> I was just going to say it's it's hard to offensive rebound when you're just trying to jam the ball in there on the first side and not take predictable shots. I think that's what kind of took away from it in the after the first quarter we were taking good shots and that leads to offensive rebounding opportunities and um, I mean I'm just looking here, Kells had four, Fab had three, um, one, two, like we had 16 as a team so you know that's that's a good number we want to live by um, but I think majority of those came in the first quarter so we need to keep that throughout the game. Yeah, and, and DJ obviously had a really good game. It's really hard to defend against him when he's playing like that. Did you guys have a game plan against him going into the match? Um, and, and did you execute it the way you would like to? Um, well, he was 9 of 13, so probably not. Um, but, I mean, he, he's a great player. You know, I play with him from the AIS. Uh, we've grown up together. Um, he's had a great career. Um, and he's, you know, really stepped it up in the NBL now. Um, 
And, you know, when he's making tough shots like that, he's he's one of the hardest people to guard in the league. You know, 5'8 from three is tough. Um, but, you know, you just deal with what you can. And I don't think we did, did a good job responding to him getting some open looks. And um, we could have probably taken a little bit of a step up on him defensively, but um, we didn't really take on that challenge as well as we could have. That's all. Thanks, guys. Oh, thanks.